Sometimes I would imagine myself in American History X as a white version of myself curb stomping an Asian version of myself. What the Because he is Asian. In reality, I'm about half Asian, which you can see in my photos. So guys, Derek from ReplaceMoreDates.com. As you would imagine, we are revisiting the Cumbot Trenbolone at 16 brain damage injecting peanut butter fiasco again. So this is brain damage from Tren Abuse Part 2. A few more details. He has the infamous OK Buddy Retard Award on the subreddit. The Doom Award, a sense of impending doom. I guess that's different than the last one. Um, he has the helpful award and he has the silver award, which is shows the silver award dot, dot, dot. And that is it. All right. So anyway, I guess maybe that's accomplishment. You know, I still don't really know what this is for, but, um, apparently it grants 100 coins. So <laughs> is there a fucking currency on my subreddit? Like, I don't know. The, uh, so this morning I made a post about my story store about my experience taking trend from a young age having my brain fried from it so this is the one that we just posted probably yesterday you know if I have chronologically timed my timed my posts properly in it I skipped over the details of some of my outbursts and moments of instability so if you recall he mentioned how he was uh, became racist on trend and then would overcorrect for being racist by like donating and like going and doing like charitable things or something. And um, he was also violent towards women and other, you know, troubling outcomes, which we are going to get into. Outburst towards women. Trend made me violent towards everyone, but especially towards girls my age. I would sometimes get pissed as hell when girls would laugh around me because even if they were laughing at a joke I told, I would secretly think they were laughing at me. This is classic. Classic trend, you know, you're like, you're like a hyper, you could be like hyper confident on trend and like uber paranoid and insecure at the same time. It's like the weirdest combination of feelings ever. I would say shut up in a snappy manner, which would confuse whoever I was talking to and make me look mental. I'd try to play it off like I was kidding, but I couldn't control it. And eventually girls would start to think there was something wrong with me. This added to my social isolation. I would sometimes do similar things to guys, but girls really pissed me off for some reason. On two separate occasions, I was with a girl I liked and I suddenly became irritable and started acting extremely coldly towards her. The mood change was so sudden that she would think it was a joke I was making, which would piss me off to the point where I would grab her by the throat or shoulders to try to show that I was seriously pissed. This happened twice, both times after I started MK677. Thankfully, I didn't do anything worse but this was enough to prevent me from having any relationships for fear of it occurring again. Okay, so if you recall, this is, it, he was on MK plus Trend solo, so he was not using a test base. He was, in fact, on a pretty decent dose of Trenbolone acetate with nothing else. So he had total estrogen deprivation, um, no you know, baseline androgens other than you know, the androgenicity of the Trend. And whatever the fuck it's doing in your brain. If you haven't seen part one, it seems kind of weird that he would say both times after I'd started MK677. Um, but yeah, you know, trend from a young age. I think you guys are on the same page. This guy was 16 years old. So anyways, he is 19 now currently. And some of these stories are between the ages of 16 to 19. Racism and overcorrection. I mentioned this in my other post briefly, but I would sometimes have extremely racist thoughts during the day. I would be sitting in class and I would envision a Nazi parade with death metal music playing and think about killing blacks and Asians. Sometimes I would imagine myself in American History X as a white version of myself curb stomping an Asian version of myself. What the fuck? Because he is Asian. In reality, I'm about half Asian, which you can see in my photos. An hour or so after one of these visions, I would come to my senses and realize that I had been thinking messed up and horrible things. Yeah. And I would feel absolutely horrible about it. I would feel like I didn't deserve to be on earth and that I was one of Satan's creations, not one of God's. I felt filthy and vile and I remember praying that I would be struck by lightning and destroyed during a thunderstorm. I would then promptly enter in an overcorrection period where I would attempt to attempt to atone for my sins by helping minorities. In quotations, helping. 
I would go into the lunchroom and buy like three hot dogs and walk around to black people and ask if they wanted one. I did this a handful of times. I would give ridiculous amounts of money to homeless people too, sometimes over $50. I even tried to give money to normal black or Asian classmates, many of whom were more well off than I was. Like what the fuck? Can you imagine? I can't like, I've read some volatile trend stories. I've heard some weird shit, but like this one probably took the cake as like, like this. okay, I'm like laughing at just how like absurd the situation is, but it's like, I'm just trying to imagine this fucking trend fiend going into the lunchroom to buy hot, hot dogs and try and give it out to feel better about himself. Like this is like such a weird situation. Like the psychological fuckery is like next level in this one. I believe that these emotions were mostly a result of immense stress on my body due to androgen use, lack of estrogen, lack of sleep, and undiagnosed anxiety. Yeah, so often overlooked too is the trend is not an issue. Like obviously the compound itself at a high enough dose can be problematic, especially in the psychological aspect, but compounded on top of that is the lack of sleep. So trend, you know, historically, and you know, you probably experienced it yourself if you've used it, Getting high quality sleep on it is, you know, few and far between. It's very difficult to get high quality sleep. There's a reason why it is nicknamed Trendsomnia. You know, it's like the only compound that has a fucking word tied into the word insomnia. And it is uh, quite accurate in that you'll just like wake up with your bed sheets fucking soaked in sweat uh, and your sleep quality is shit. And yeah, like the lack of sleep, you can imagine what kind of impact that's going to have on the cognitive outcomes when you know, even not on gear, having shitty sleep is going to fuck up your mental state severely. It's like one of the biggest implications in depression and, you know, sense of well-being and being able to manage emotional stress well. Having high quality sleep is like fucking critical for that. So when you have a trend that's already, you know, rough on your psychological state and compounded with the fact that the trends make you sleep like shit. So you have shitty sleep plus the fucking trends, like boom, perfect storm for being you know, mentally unstable. You know, this is an odd situation, but you know, definitely Trent is a culprit of many mentally, many mentally unstable uh, episodes of weird shit. So lack of estrogen, lack of sleep, undiagnosed anxiety. However, both of my parents who are normal and psychologically healthy people did have religious visions when they were younger and believe they spoke to God. My, for my father, this happened right after his mother passed. And for my mother, it was around the time her father lost his job and she began puberty. Hence, I believe that visions of extreme violence and hatred were the result of stress coupled with a genetic component. I no longer experience anything of the sort. So if you recall correctly, he uh, came off, you know, cold turkey and he's been functioning off of just natural production up until now, you know, after the, you know, year of trend abuse. And he suspects he's low T because he has a lot of, you know, symptoms that are indicative of that. But I guess he doesn't experience that issue anymore now off the trend. So that is good. Cumbot obsession. So if you remember, he tried to, uh, oh, he's just summarizing for me here. In my first post, I mentioned how I became obsessed with designing and building a sex robot, which I referred to as a cumbot. I, because I was too scared that I would hurt girls if I had a relationship with them. I thought I needed to build a sex machine to fulfill my sexual desires. I would spend hours researching electronics or materials that could be used to build a sex robot, but such a task is beyond one guy on trend. So why don't you just buy like a flashlight or some shit if it's like that bad? Like aren't there fucking devices that exist already that do this kind of shit? And why do you need to build a fucking robot? Like there's, there's gotta be, you know, in the porn industry or the sex toy industry, there's definitely something that exists that is a better alternative than you sitting down and writing out <laughs> hypothetical blueprints. Like you see this guy's equations in the last fucking episode like some of his mathematical formulas for designing like perfect like butthole tightness and shit or whatever it was. It was like, it was, it made no sense. However, I didn't care. I made drawings and wrote down details of how the cumbot would work. It was ridiculously depraved. I was obsessed with proportion, size, and the golden ratio, which is evident in the drawings I posted. I thought of building the sex robot as building a divine temple of sex. I had no technical or artistic skills. But I didn't think that would prevent me from creating a sex robot. I tried to build ratios and symbolism into my designs, and I believed that eventually I would just know how to build it. I had my dad teach me how to weld, which I told him was so I could fix cars. In reality, I just wanted to build a gun pot. I mentioned in my other post how I would create names for myself. During this period, I unironically called myself Divine Ejaculatory Monk. 
and I fantasized about shaving my head. Look at this, was this like a Connor Murphy reference? Uh, I was extremely depraved. I also had intentions of selling these robots. Inspired by Newman's own salad dressing, I wanted to start a nonprofit and sell cumbots at the lowest possible price. Like I said, there was a spiritual aspect tied into this. I even made a theme song, which I thought I would use to advertise. I'll link it below. All in all, my sexual depravity and obsession with sex robots mostly ended after I quit using Trend at MK677. Posted these before, but here are some of the cumbot drawings I still have. I'll try to find the rest tomorrow. Okay, we already went through these, so if you want to go see my uh, detailing of the blueprints in question, I like go through all of the drawings, all of the you know the ratios, the mathematical formulas, um, some of the hypothetical like uh, outcomes that could come as a result of some of this uh, the blueprints that were designed and whatnot. You know, like some of the fucking words on his thing were just like hilarious. So if you want to check that out, go watch the first uh, part one. And that sounds like it's it. Upvotes of Derek Season makes a story time video. I need to see this story time video. A story on a coward that puts his hands on women so you can jerk off. Um, OP delivered. Not just pics either, but the sex equations we're all trying to master. Um, ah yes, Newman's own cumbots. All profits deposits are given to charity. This sounds like a manic episode. When I hit puberty, I had a random ma manic episode. I thought I could talk to God. I became unusually confident with women. I missed this aspect of mania. And I was giving homeless people way too much money. This manic episode was so intense and lasted one year and resulted in my terrible grades, but also sudden increase in popularity. Eventually my mania subsided and all the new friends I made were suddenly left. Wondering what the hell happened to me. It was like I was a different person to the, and to this day I maintain that I was. I feel like androgen exposure definitely causes manic episodes and people predisposed to bipolar disorder. So yeah, like I mentioned, I don't think this guy had, you know, the most stable mindset going into his use, not to mention his brain had not even been close to fully matured yet. The guy was 16 years old after all. So, you know, I'm not saying this is an expected outcome at all. This is fucking rare, even in a 16 year old, but you know, it's definitely uh, like the whole point I believe is that you should not be using shit that is going to fuck with your mental state if you have a, like to be honest, trend can make a guy who's super normal act a little weird. So if a guy who's super normal goes to like a little bit weird, you can imagine a guy who is like actually mentally unstable taking the shit and like where that's gonna take him. Combot theme got my hype. Imagine if these drawings and equations are actually the key to making the best combot ever made. I feel like there's some hidden wisdom there. I feel dirty just by looking at your combot drawings. I knew I shouldn't click, but I did. Now, here I am full of regret. I'm sorry, brother. Theme song is a banger. Yeah, I actually thought it was pretty good, to be honest. And on this episode of Trend Tales, mostly ended, so you are, so are you still producing this combot is the question we all wanna know. Nah, I'm done with the combots. I just meant that the thoughts slowly faded away instead of disappearing all at once. Uh, <laughs> I unironically called myself divine ejaculatory monk and I fantasized about shaving my head. Uh, let's see, this is the most magnificent post I've ever read on the sub, absolutely splendid. Can't wait to hear Dr. Delts read this to us for our nighty night time story. Wow, all these trend stories are insane. I've ran trend many times. I got a little more irritable, mostly from not sleeping well, but always was always able to remind myself that this was the reason and not to be short with people. These guys have some serious instabilities to begin with. Yeah, so you have to like really be able to check yourself on this shit because again, like I mentioned in the first one, you don't really know that you're acting different. Like you think you're acting totally normal even though you're being short with people, you're being snappy, you're, you know, your patience is dwindled to nearly nothingness. Um, and you're uber paranoid for like no reason, you know, shit like that is pretty common on trend, even at individuals who are like, you know, pretty goddamn put together. So like here, this guy, this sounds like a more typical scenario. I got a little more irritable, mostly from not sleeping well, but was always able to remind myself that this re was the reason to not be short with people. Yeah, you know, like most people aren't going to be like this aware of what's going on when they're on trend, but um, like I said, the lowest effective dose is much lower than what most people are using for performance enhancement. And at that dose, um, you can probably get away with, you know, a far more tolerable side effect profile. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do any of this shit. I'm just saying that, um, I do think that you really need to evaluate your mental state before you go into AAS use, to be honest.
This is even crazier than the trend at 14 kid. By the way, if anyone knows about how he's doing, let me know, please. His channel is pretty dead. Not even gonna read the thing, just gonna wait for Derek to react to it. How are you doing now? What are the main things you change or changing to keep you on the right path? What important lessons outside from the obvious don't do trend through puberty stuff have you learned throughout this whole ordeal? No answer. Um, or wait, hang on. What the fuck, bro? Sex equation, this is why sex is perfect. Yeah, I was obsessed with the idea that sex was perfect. Is there any other answers here? I learned a little. I was trying to learn how to make a sex robot, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, do you think the MK677 messed with your head? I do think it made it worse. Constant ghrelin receptor agonism probably isn't good for the brain. There was an often cited study where researchers administered rats MK677 and made them more prone to fear. The ghrelin receptor in the amygdala seems to be primarily Responsible for this effect. Obviously, this was in rats, and they did inject MK directly into their brains at one point, but generally, these chemical mechanism studies tend to translate fairly well to humans. So yeah, I mentioned this in the first video, how like induced PTSD in rodents through chronic ghrelin receptor agonism. So this, you know, instigated a bit of, you know, like worry in the bodybuilding space if MK677 is going to do that or other growth hormone um, releasing peptides that interact with the ghrelin receptor. And, you know, it's speculated that it may, you know, enhance fear, to be honest. Like, overall, like, stress response, fear, fucking, like, self-inducing PTSD was, if I recall correctly, the main outcome of that rodent model. And translating it back to humans, you know, crawling, chronically elevating this uh, um, stimulation of the receptor not only are you going, like, I guess you're hungry as fuck, so you're going to eat more, but in addition to that, could definitely enhance um, stress response to some extent. You know, how significant is it? Doesn't even translate into humans, you know, in practical application. Um, I don't know for sure, but it is uh, interesting nonetheless and probably worth noting, um, especially if you're, this is a long-term therapy, like some TRT clinics are prescribing MK677 now, which, you know, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but... They are, and using that, you know, long term for years and years on end, is that a safe practice? You know, I'd definitely be cautious. Definitely would be cautious. Okay, I think that is pretty much the conclusion of the study. So a fucking wild ride for this guy. Glad to hear he is uh, on the road to recovery now. If you saw the uh, first post, he is indeed natural now and trying to decide if he, you know, TRT is a route for him. Um, I mentioned the importance of, you know, getting a high quality doctor to oversee your care. And this guy could probably benefit from a post cycle therapy regimen of some sort rather than just sitting there. But again, you know, it's to be determined. He was worried that he had, you know, permanent low T because of what he used. I don't think he does. I think he just needs to, uh, you know, give it enough time, which it sounds like he did, as well as use a proper post cycle therapy, which it does not sound like he did. So I would be interested to see where he ends up with that. Um, and then, you know, obviously TRT down the line, you know, might make sense to circle back to, but. In general, this guy's experience has totally turned him off to anabolic steroids. Um, and is there any practical application takeaways from his scenario? Not really, you know, like he has such hyper extreme examples of everything, like the likelihood this is gonna happen, he was almost fucking zero, but it does reflect the more, more overarching importance of assessing objectively how you are going to respond to anabolics um, using the lowest effective dose, because again, it doesn't just come down to you know organ stress too. It's also psychological impact. Shit like that is why you want to use with the lowest effective dose and titrate up based on necessity only. If you are in a particular sport or a particular, like it's not like everyone's a bodybuilder, so you don't necessarily need the same dosages that bodybuilders do, you know, in a sports performance context or just in a, like so many different avenues that you could explore for this shit and you need to evaluate yourself objectively beforehand and kind of determine is this something that's worth the risk given my baseline you know are you somebody who gets snappy easily do you fly off the handle or are you already an irritable person is this going to enhance that to some extent that's going to make you essentially intolerable to fucking be around by your loved ones you know your friends etc because you might end up losing them on trend if you end up uh, you know exacerbating things significantly so definitely something to think about and uh, definitely something to think about when it comes to, uh, you know, like teenagers starting this kind of shit, you know, before a full brain maturation. So um, do I necessarily think you need to wait till you're, you know, 25 plus or whatever? No, not really. But at the same time, there's certainly an argument to, to be had in the psychological aspect, especially. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacerenades.com. 
Follow me on Instagram at more place more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, couple podcasts. No, I actually BitChute though. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic that I just mentioned. Um, I recommended lab tests and diagnostics and anything else that I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.